Hey guys, it's Dr. Johnny Bowden, and uh, I just recorded a webinar called What Do You Take, Dr. Johnny Bowden? What supplements do you take on a daily basis? And I realized uh, if you don't know who I am, why would you give a you know what what I take on a daily basis? So I thought I'd just do this brief intro for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm a board certified nutritionist, which means that I've uh, gotten a certification from the Certifying Board of Nutrition Specialists of the American College of Nutrition. I have a PhD in holistic nutrition. I also have a master's degree in psychology. I've done a lot of coaching and um, I also have earned six uh, national certifications as a personal trainer. I've written a whole bunch of books. You can go on my Amazon page, look up Johnny Bowden. You'll see a lot of them. I've done a ton of morning television also available online, but I think main, mainly the, the credential that I have that makes people actually ask me, what do you take? What do you do? Is the fact that I'm 73. I've been doing this about 30 years and uh, I'm 73 years old. And I guess they wonder what a guy who still has a libido at 73, who still plays tennis two hours a day for five days a week, uh, who still has an active career and is looking forward to the future. How does somebody get to be 73 and do that stuff? And I guess that makes it noteworthy what I take. Now, as you'll hear in the webinar, I never recommend that anybody do what I do. My whole career in health coaching and, and teaching and education has all been about finding your own uh, inner guru, not following somebody else's guru. In fact, I wrote a column once, I am not your guru. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in you being the leader of your own health team. Um, but people are curious and I'm happy to share it. And so that is who I am. And I hope you enjoyed the webinar. What supplements do you take, Dr. Johnny? Hey everybody, it's Johnny Bowden, and today I'm going to answer the question that I get asked frequently, actually, which is, what supplements do you personally take, Johnny? What do you take? What's in your, uh, what's in your cabinet? What do you take on a daily basis? People are curious about that. I'm happy to answer it. About once a year, I write an article about it. I, I usually get interviewed a lot by magazines, and they frequently ask me, especially around the first of the year, you know, what are the top 10 supplements? And I can never answer what the top 10 supplements are, but I can tell you what the top 10 supplements for me are. And um, we'll get into that in just a minute. But before we really start talking about specifics, I want to handle an issue which I consider to be the elephant in the room of every single discussion on supplements. And that's the advice that you frequently get from your family doctor that vitamins just give you expensive urine, right? How many people have heard that? especially if you ask conventional doctors. They'll just tell you, oh, you're wasting your money. It just gives you expensive urine. So let's talk about this and, and deconstruct it and kind of get rid of it once and for all. So when you do a urine test, metabolites show up, metabolites of things that you've taken. That includes drugs, it includes vitamins, it includes all kinds of things, foods, and you will see things in the urine. Now, what does that mean? Well, I think the best way to explain that is to talk about a couple of these guys that some of you may know. This is Barry Bonds, before and after steroids. So how did we know that he took steroids? Because he took a urine test and they showed up in the urine. And that's what led to the whole scandal. So should we tell Barry Bonds, hey, listen, you know, steroids just give you expensive urine. They don't do anything on the way down. This is Dorian Yates. He held the Mr. Olympia bodybuilding title for six years in a row, from 1992 to 1997. This is him 20 years later. Maybe we should tell Dorian Yates, hey, those steroids didn't do any good because they showed up in your urine. Do you understand how idiotic that is when doctors tell you that? All kinds of things show up in your urine. Prescription drugs. Should we tell people, hey, don't take prescription drugs. They just give you expensive urine. Recreational drugs, absolutely. Steroids, vitamins, minerals, uh, pot shows up. Everything shows up in your urine. And that certainly doesn't mean it didn't work on the way down. So going back to, uh, I guess, the other half of the elephant in the room or a second elephant in the room is your conventional doctor. There he is and very sure of himself. And he'll tell you, hey, vitamins research. There's no research on that stuff. Show me the science. All right, these are people who haven't read a journal article in 20 years. Let me just give you an exercise that you can do. And you can show this to your doctor, although they're usually going to be too close minded to even look at it. This is just one page on one vitamin 
that I put into the National Institute of Health uh, Library. It's called PubMed. You can go to it online, pubmed.gov. You can put in any vitamin. Uh, If you'll notice under search results, this is item 1 to 20. This is the first part of the first page of 30 1,375 published research papers just on vitamin B12. So the next time they tell you there's no research on that stuff, you can know that they are totally full of shit. They just haven't read the research. So before we continue and before I go into my, my personal top 10, I want to I point out that I'm going to leave out a lot of great supplements. And there's a reason for that. Um, there are supplement programs you can take for just about any condition. There's a lot of supplements that are very heart healthy. We talked about them. Dr. Sinatra and I talked about a lot of these heart focused supplements in our book, The Great Cholesterol Myth. Um, and, you know, there are many of them that are, are very focused on that. Um, I'm not going to give you a heart disease protocol in this webinar. Uh, But I want to acknowledge that there are wonderful supplements that are particularly targeted to the heart uh, that I may not mention in this particular webinar, but that doesn't mean that they're not important. So don't don't send me hate mail saying, what about CoQ10? Very important. I get it. Not going to focus on that right now. Same thing with joints. Now, I happen to have arthritis. I have severe arthritis, as a matter of fact. And I have a very, uh, I think, sophisticated uh, supplement program that I designed myself with a lot of nutraceuticals that really help support joint health. I'm not going to mention those as well because not all of you have arthritis. What I want you to know is that you can design wonderful programs in addition to the basics that really target any particular condition. Um, Another condition that I had personally for 30 years was hepatitis C. I had it up until two years ago when they came out with the eight-week medical cure for hepatitis, which I went through, and so there's no more hepatitis in my blood. But for 30 years, there was, and I never had a symptom, never missed a day of work was never sick from it. Um, And I believe that a great deal of that uh, was due to the fact that I had a very wonderfully designed supplement program specifically for the liver with all the usual uh, liver support uh, nutraceuticals like milk, thistle, and selenium. Not going to mention those today. It doesn't mean they're not important. What I'm suggesting here is that you can come up with a basic formula, a basic number of supplements for yourself for general everyday support and health. And then you can also specialize depending on any particular condition that you may have. So to get to the basics, the ones I take on a daily basis, and again, I'm not recommending that anybody else go on precisely the program that I'm on because I believe, and I've said this in every article I've ever written, every book I've ever written, every article I've ever done, and every lecture I've ever given, everybody's different. There's no one formula that works for everybody, just like there's no diet that works for everybody. There's no supplement program that's ideal for everybody. However, many of the things I'm going to mention in my own personal top 10, there might be 12 on this, I'm not quite sure, but uh, in my personal kind of baker's dozen of supplements that I take, many of them do have a lot of universal applicability. But don't ever copy somebody else's supplement program. Understand that we're all unique and different and we all need different things in different quantities. But I'm going to give you the basics, the things I take, and I'll mention when I think these are extremely useful for most people. And I start my list with fish oil. Um, You would be hard pressed to find a person in America who would not benefit from fish oil supplementation. Uh, Fish oil contains a particular kind of fat called omega-3. Fish oil is the best source for that. There are other sources, but fish oil is the best. Uh, There are two particular omega-3s that are found in fish oil. They're called EPA and DHA. I won't even bother you with what that stands for. It's a long, unpronounceable name, but the point is that's on the label of any fish oil bottle. It will tell you how much DHA and how much EPA is in the capsule. And the ideal dose for that is mm, around three grams a day of combined EPA and DHA. Uh, Why do I take fish oil? It's one of the most anti-inflammatory molecules on the planet. And inflammation, as you may have heard me talk about many times in the past, is uh, one of the biggest promoters of chronic disease that we know of. It's certainly one of the major promoters of heart disease, and there's an inflammatory component to just about every degenerative uh, disease that we can think of. So just for its anti-inflammation properties, I would recommend fish oil for everybody, but also it helps lower triglycerides, a particular kind of fat that's found in the bloodstream. It helps lower blood pressure, just as a million really good things. Things for you. And again, the secret of fish oil is that it contains omega-3s. 
Uh, and those two omega-3s that are found in fish oil are, as I said, EPA and DHA. That's the brand I happen to take. Um, it's also available in a liquid form called Swirls. They now call it Serious Delicious, and this is really good stuff. So if you have like a, an aversion to the taste of fish or you think you're going to burp it up or stuff like that, which usually only happens when the fish oil is rancid, um, one alternative is to use this incredible formula called Seriously Delicious, which comes in all kinds of flavors, and it really does doesn't taste like, it tastes more like a topping for, for frozen yogurt than it tastes uh, like anything else. And you can get a, a fairly decent dosage, a fairly heavy dosage by just taking a tablespoon of that. Now, there is an alternative if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, and that's a whole other discussion, a whole other webinar. But if you are and you won't take anything that uh, comes from any animal products, the alternative to get omega-3s is flax oil. Uh, flax oil uh, has a plant-based omega-3. The thing you should know about it is it's not quite as powerful as the two omega-3s that are found in fish. So if you are going to take the vegetarian option of flax oil, remember to take more of it than you would take if you were just taking fish oil because it has to be converted to EPA and DHA into the body so that it can be really uh, useful to you. The second nutrient that I take on a daily basis is magnesium, and I'm going to make a global recommendation on that one as, as well, because surveys have shown consistently that about 75% of the people do not get even the paltry, re ridiculously small amount of magnesium that the FDA, uh, that the uh, USDA recommends as uh, a minimum daily requirement. Um, which is 400 milligrams. So, so we really need more than that. I recommend between 8 and 1200 milligrams of magnesium. And um, it does so many things. It lowers blood sugar. It lowers blood pressure. It's a basic relaxer. That's the reason that people take Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt baths are nothing more than magnesium that you soak in and it gets in through the skin. So very, very important to have enough magnesium. Very relaxing. Uh, the third nutrient, uh, also kind of a global recommendation for me because of the widespread deficiency, would be vitamin D. And remember to always get what's called vitamin D3. It's a particular form of vitamin D. That's the one that's most usable and most absorbable, and that's the highest quality one. So the cheaper ones sometimes will use vitamin D2. They sometimes fortify foods with vitamin D2. It's useless. You need vitamin D3. And it's associated with so many good things. Uh, low levels. And, and, and low levels are just, you know, very widespread in the population. And low levels are associated with uh, great difficulty in losing weight, uh, poor physical performance, particularly in older people, um, low levels of vitamin D associated with certain cancers. There's a list of about 100 conditions on the vitamin D website. And you can go to the vitamin D website and find out all of the research that's been done on it and all the conditions that are affected by it. But the point is there are lots and lots of conditions uh, that are made much worse when you don't have enough vitamin D. It's really, really important. And it's another one that surveys have shown about three quarters of the population doesn't have the optimal or the ideal amount. And then I put in a high quality multiple vitamin. I put this in mainly because a lot of people are missing some of the smaller nutrients that you don't really hear a lot about, like manganese and all of the B vitamins. I'm not going to be talking about taking those as separate, so I would want to get those from uh, my high quality multiple vitamin. And there may be some minerals in a high quality multiple vitamin uh, that you're not getting. So in general, I take one of those, or I recommend that you take one of those as a general insurance policy, uh, just to fill in all the gaps of the things that you're not going to be getting. Uh, uh, if you take separate things. Um, this is a vitamin that almost nobody's heard of, but it's maybe one of the most important uh, vitamins that nobody ever heard of, and it's called vitamin K2. Now, Many of you may have heard of vitamin K. Some of you, some of you older folks who may be on a blood thinners have been told uh, to limit your green leafy vegetables because vitamin K uh, helps you clot. And uh, a lot of times they're on medications that, that make your blood thinner and you don't want to be clotting. So they tell you to limit your green vegetables. That's a whole other discussion. But the, the vitamin K that's found in green leafy vegetables like lettuce is vitamin K1. And yes, it's important, but it's so easy to get. There's just almost never a reason to supplement with vitamin K1. It's everywhere. I mean, if you're eating junky food and you put some lettuce on it, you've got vitamin K, K1. But K2 is a whole other story. 
It's really only found in foods that not a lot of people in America eat, fermented foods like kimchi, the Korean uh, delicacy, which is not always the most delicious to the American palate. Um, it's found in other fermented foods. It's found in organ meats, a lot of red meats, but, but cuts that we don't normally eat. So K2 is really one of those that you really probably want to supplement with. And uh, you notice that I, I put a picture there of a traffic cop and said it's the traffic cop for calcium. Let me explain what I mean by that. So calcium is very, very important. You've all heard that, especially you women. You've heard how important it is for bone health, and, and probably your doctor or your health practitioner has advised calcium supplements. Well, there's a problem. Calcium is, in fact, a great nutrient if it stays in its lane. And its lane is the skeletal system. You want the calcium that you take to go into your bones. What you don't want is the calcium you take to go into your arteries. Now, even if you don't know a lot about heart disease, you probably heard somebody, your parents, somebody refer to hardening of the arteries, also known as calcification of the arteries, right? Something becomes calcified, becomes hard. You don't want any calcium going into your arteries. And yet, when you take calcium without the supporting nutrients that make it really effective for the bones, some of it winds up in the arteries. And some studies have actually shown uh, in women that people who followed that advice of their doctors to take Tums or some really crappy form of calcium and without magnesium and without boron and vitamin K2 and all of the and vitamin D and all the other supporting synergistic nutrients, they just take calcium. Well, some of it winds up in their arteries and they actually have heart, uh, higher rates of heart disease. You don't want that. So K2 is like your traffic cop. It keeps calcium where it's supposed to be in the bones, thus being healthy for both the bones and the heart. Okay. Resveratrol. I don't make a universal recommendation on this one, but I take it. Um, resveratrol is the stuff that's found in red wine. That's what, one of the reasons that people say red wine is so helpful. It's not the only thing that's found in red wine, but it's one of the main uh, compounds. And it's a, a very potent antioxidant. And some studies over the last decade have indicated that uh, resveratrol actually turns on certain genes in our body that are associated with longevity. So it's kind of known as the longevity nutrient. But other studies have shown that it does a lot more than just that. Not that that wouldn't be enough. But it really has uh, impact on, on many different metabolic pathways and is a generally good nutrient. Um, again, not one of my five top nutrients if I'm telling people uh, if I'm recommending to somebody who only wants to take four or five things, this is not going to be in the top five, but it's, it's very useful, very potent. And in any case, it's in my particular regimen. So I'm mentioning it. Um, curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric. And what you're seeing on the screen there, the, the left-hand side of the screen there, the, is the turmeric root. And when it's ground up, it looks like that nice yellow powder. And that is the ingredient that makes curry yellow. So Indian food and all those curries, they're nice, bright yellow because of the amount of turmeric that they use. They use it in all of those curries and sauces. And uh, turmeric has this, act, this group of active ingredients that are collectively known as curcumin that are just as close to a magical compound as you can get in the nutraceutical world. Uh, highly anti-inflammatory, highly anti-inflammatory, very, very liver friendly. This was one of my key um, supplements when I was taking my liver program for hepatitis C. Curcumin just does wonderful things that way. Um, so in general, we could do really a whole hour on curcumin. I'll tell you a very quick funny story. I was one of two English um, speakers who was invited to the first annual anti-aging conference in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a number of years ago. And the other English speaking, uh, they all had translators and the headphones and all that stuff. And the other guy that, that spoke English was wonderful doctor here in the, in the States, Dr. Tom O'Brien. And the subject of his talk was curcumin. And that was like a decade ago. And he was uh, less than a decade ago, but quite a while ago. And he was explaining how it affected just about every metabolic pathway you could imagine. And it was one of the healthiest things you could possibly eat or supplement with. So curcumin has been around. It's very, very potent, something I recommend to most people. Um, here's a couple of versions of it. I, I take Cura Med by Terry Naturally. That company is known for very high quality curcumin. Uh, curcumin. So is Life Extension. Um, 
Either one of those is, is, a, is a wonderful brand. They have the most absorbable kinds of curcumin. Curcumin is not well absorbed, so you're only going to get some of it, and the, and the better forms give you a little bit more to absorb. So very, very important, very, very good. Uh, number eight on my list is probiotics. Uh, you probably have heard, I hope you've heard at this point, if you're following the health world at all, how important the gut is for your overall health. And the gut is actually uh, home to trillions of microbes. We have actually more non-human cells in our gut than we have human cells in our entire body. Something like 1.3 as many uh, non-human cells as there are human cells. And most of them live in the gut. Some on the skin, but most in the gut. And the way we keep that gut healthy is by kind of uh, keeping the good guys in, in the majority and the bad guys in the minority. Now, what is the bad guy in the gut? Uh, yeast. Most of you have heard of yeast infections. Well, that's a, a particular bug called candida. And candida in the gut, you know, can if it overgrows and it, and it starts to, you know, take majority control, can give you lots and lots of problems. Um, and, and yeast infections, people who've had yeast infections know. Um, so the good guys in the gut are actually called probiotics, and you can take them as a supplement. They're found in fermented foods. They're found in yogurt. Uh, they're found in kefir. Uh, they're found in naturally fermented sauerkraut, but it's always good, in my opinion, to supplement with probiotics because uh, we, we really need to keep that gut healthy, and uh, probiotics are the good bacteria that we want to encourage the growth of in our gut. So very, very important for gut health. Uh, number nine is a surprising supplement. People are surprised to hear that I take this on a daily basis, but I do. I swig it right out of the bottle, and that's the bottle that I take. It's actually uh, extra virgin olive oil, and a couple of words about extra virgin olive oil, because this is about the best bargain you could get in the nutraceutical arena. Um, extra virgin olive oil is a very counterfeited food. Most extra virgin olive oil that you see in the supermarket is not extra virgin olive oil. It is a blend. They blend it with other oils. They don't use extra virgin. Um, and and, and it's, it's just very, very highly counterfeited. Um, and there doesn't even seem to be a real correlation between price and quality here because this brand, Cobram Estate, uh, which you can get, by the way, at Walmart, at Amazon. I get it at Sprouts, and it's under 10 bucks. And it's the best bargain I've ever seen in the food community. It's a really, really wonderful uh, substance. Extra virgin olive oil is loaded with things called olive polyphenols, and all of them are antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and heart healthy. And they're just, they're just teeming with all of these wonderful um, uh, compounds. And this particular olive oil also tastes amazing. So I don't mind swigging it out of the jar and, and taking a couple of tablespoons worth right from the jar every single day. So that's one of my supplements. Uh, the tenth one on my list is also a supplement. It's called Sun Fiber. And I take uh, a fiber supplement because, frankly, nobody gets enough fiber. We just don't. Uh, our Paleolithic ancestors used to get about 50 grams a day. We get, you know, between 4 and 11. Uh, even, even the conservative health organizations, which, you know, the World Health Organization, organizations I don't normally, you know, go by their recommendations because I think they're way too conservative, but even they think we need to get between 25 and 38 grams of fiber a day for, for maximum health. Uh, it does so many things. It slows the entrance of food into your bloodstream so you don't get quite as big a sugar rush when you're eating things that have sugar in it. Um, and it basically keeps your blood sugar nice and steady. And also the type of fiber that's in the sun fiber supplement is actually food for those good microbes in the gut that we just talked about. They actually eat it and they make uh, substances that they can, they can uh, use as fuel. Remember, those, those microbes in the gut are living, breathing organisms. They, have, they go to the bathroom, you know, and they have uh, waste products and they also need food and this is their food. And it's also really, really good for you. Now, sun fiber is also an ingredient you may buy 
try a different fiber supplement, you look on the ingredients, you'll say, oh, it's made with sun fiber. That's always a good sign because it's really one of the best fiber uh, supplements you can get, whether you buy it under its own brand like that or you buy it as, as the main ingredient in somebody else's fiber. A lot of fiber companies actually buy sun fiber as their main ingredient. Uh, number 11 on my list is uh, full-spectrum hemp oil, uh, also known as CBD. Um, I'm a huge fan of this. I think it does a lot of things, that are, all of which are good. It works on something um, that was just actually identified in 1992 called the endocannabinoid system. We all have it. Uh, all uh, vertebrates have it. It's, it's an ancient system that regulates all kinds of processes in the body, from blood pressure to appetite to mood and and um, CBD is one of about 100 cannabinoids, which are compounds that are found in the cannabis plant, uh, but it does not have any psychoactive properties. It doesn't get you high in any way, and it's found in full-spectrum hemp oil. The, the kind I use personally is Barleen's. A couple of reasons for that. Um, lots of companies are making CBD oil. Most of them have been around since yesterday. Uh, there are a few that are maybe five years old, like CB Science is a really, really good company. There are others. But Barleen's has been around for 30 years. And they made their reputation in oil extraction. They make the best flaxseed oil in the world. They make uh, wonderful, um, you know, other, other oils, hemp oil. And so when they went into this, I, I thought, well, if I'm going to try this, I want to make sure it's, uh, it's by a company that actually knows how to extract oil in a healthy way and, and knows how to do assays. And, and they do assays on all of their products. So you, you can actually look at what the content is. And if there's any pesticides or contaminants, you'll see that on the assay. Not all companies do that. So I'm a big fan of the Barleen's version. Um, it comes in a couple of different flavors, if you will. One's organic, one's extra uh, uh, strength. And uh, it also even comes in one of those seriously delicious swirls I mentioned earlier regarding fish oil and flaxseed oil. Uh, this is a chocolate mint one, and it, it's really quite tasty. So you can get it anyway. I take it twice a day. I think it's very, very important. And finally, uh, rounding out my baker's dozen is something called trace mineral drops. Um, and this is one of the nastiest tasting things you can imagine. However, I've learned to dilute it with enough water so that you really barely taste it. It just tastes a little bit like salty water. And what this basically is, is all these little trace minerals that a lot of people just forget about. You know, they're really, you only need them in very, very small amounts. But when you don't have them in your diet, man, there are really things that show up that, you know, you don't really know where they're coming from. But it turns out to be because you're just not getting the right amount of these you know, practically unknown to the general public, minerals, but they're very important. They're called trace minerals. And, and they're not minerals that you need in large quantities like calcium and magnesium and, um, and things like that. Um, they're, they're minerals you need in very small quantities, but we do need them and most of us don't get them. So I throw in a few drops of that in, in water and drink it twice a day and I just hold my nose and I get it down. So basically that's my particular routine. Again, I don't necessarily recommend that for everybody. It's, that routine has been something that I've developed over the years uh, that, that works for me. I change it from time to time. I'll let you know when I change it next year. But that's what I take. So those of you who have asked, that's the answer. And please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Just hit that little thing below. And thank you so much for coming. It's always so much fun spending time with you.